Welcome back to Introduction to Communication Science. This is week four of our MOOC. And so far we've discussed the history of our field in week two and the linear transmission perspective last week. I'm very glad to see that our course is inspiring many discussions on our forum. And I'm also grateful for all your suggestions for further reading. You probably noticed that I frequently added your suggestions to the little box of nuance section. So thanks for helping improving this course. That's what a MOOC is all about. As you know by now, I'm using a very broad distinction into our field. I've said before that these categories are by no means fixed, but I find them useful nonetheless. First, we have the linear transmission perspective, then a focus on reception and signification, that's the topic of this week, and at roughly the same time, a focus on social and cultural effects of communication. The topic for this week is the second approach, the reception and signification perspective or perhaps I should say perspectives, because there is a distinction here that I will cover later. Next week we'll talk about communication as a social and cultural force. I will use week six to answer questions you might have. Post your questions on our forum. I'll make a selection of recurring themes and further explain some of the more complicated theories and concepts that we discussed. Week six is all about class interaction, so let me know which topics you want to cover. Week seven is of course very exciting because it's our exam week. You need to do the self-evaluation tests each week and pass the exam to complete this course and get a certificate of accomplishment. In week eight, we'll discuss the exam and look back at our MOOC. It's a behind the scene look on how it was made, why it was made and for who it was made. I would also love to say something about who you are, what your background is and why you enrolled in this course. There's already a survey in place to get this information. I would be greatly appreciative if you participate. Okay, back to the topic at hand. Last week, we started with the linear perspective. I explained how the First World War fueled research into our field and led to a belief in direct and uniform effects. The audience was seen as passive and defenseless against mass communication, as a hypodermic needle or a magic bullet. Later, this belief in the power of the media became more nuanced. When scientific studies failed to prove the all-powerful media hypothesis, this led to the more skeptical minimal effects hypothesis. But World War II and the rise of television clearly showed that mass communication indeed could have huge effects under some circumstances. It was now appreciated that effects were not always direct, uniform and short-term, but quite often non-immediate, long-term, indirect, and different from person to person. Eventually, the negotiated effects paradigm balanced the belief in powerful effects with the notion that the audience was actually capable of selecting and blocking messages and using them for their own ends. This line of thought was also very apparent in the reception and signification approach that had gradually developed since the 60s. We'll further discuss this approach this week.